It's 1080p True HD. There's a Wi Fi camera, but it does have the facility for an Ethernet cable. It's powered by a 12 volt adapter. It's IP66 rated, so it's suitable for use outdoors. And it's got around 20 meters night vision capability. First impressions are really very good. It's small and compact, feels like it's well made. This is how the camera is packaged. So inside the box we have the camera, the power supply, and this is an extension lead for the power supply. The aerial, a waterproof connection for the ethernet cable, instruction manual, some fittings there for mounting the camera, some cable clips and an allen key, and it looks like some self-adhesive tape obviously for mounting the cable, a template for mounting the camera, and a little card there with the support details on for Aitman. Pull the bracket out the way, just screw that on, there we go. As you can see at the rear there we've got a waterproof cover for a micro SD card. This I believe is a microphone slot so it comes with a microphone. Then at the front we've got the three infrared LEDs. This is a power LED and this is the daylight nighttime detector. If we look at the cable we can see we've got the adapter for the power supply. We've got the option there to use an Ethernet connection should we want. And then underneath this cap there is a reset button to reset the camera. That grub screw on the base there is how you adjust the camera. So you need to slacken off the grub screw with the Allen key provided. And then you get movement for everything on the camera. You can swivel the base, tip the camera up and down tilt it from side to side. So all of that just by slacking off this one grub screw. So the next thing I'm going to do is fit the micro SD card. So screws off. That just pops out. There's a rubber seal on there. This is a 64 gigabyte SD card which is the maximum that it will take and it's got to be class 10 or above. This is better than class 10. If you place the camera on the side there with the micro SD port facing upwards, the printed side of the SD card wants to be facing upwards as well and then push it in with your nail, it clicks, so that's the SD card in, I'll replace the cover, there that's the SD card fitted and the screws tightened, so I've measured the length of the cable from the power supply and that's 1.5 meters long, and Apeman also provide a 3 meter extension which means that you can actually reach 4.5 meters with the power supply so if that's not long enough if you go onto Amazon there are plenty of these cables available and I've got uh, 10 meter cables on mine I think you can even get 20 meters that just gives you a much better chance of being able to mount the camera wherever you want but I think 4.5 meters is not bad at all the camera is designed to be connected via the Two Year Smart app. Now I've already got this installed on an Android device and also on an Apple device. But if you need to download the app, remember that this is what the icon looks like. You can go directly onto Google Play or the App Store on Apple. Or you can use the QR code that's actually in the operating instructions. So once you've downloaded the app, you've got to register with your email address and enter a password. Then you've got to connect the app to the Wi-Fi router and then you're ready to go. So to help me with the setup process, I've just attached a camera to a piece of scrap wood just so that it's got a base and I'm going to connect the power supply now. That's the power supply on and as you can see we've got the green power light that's coming on the camera there and you'll see now that the light has started flashing and that means that the camera is ready now to pair with the app. So I'll open up the Two Year Smart app. Now there is a plus sign in the top right hand corner, I'm going to press that. So I'm going to select smart camera and then it's saying add device, power the device on and make sure the indicator is flashing quickly or a prompt tone is heard. Well the indicator is flashing so there's no issue with that, we're ready to go. And then underneath it says next step so I'll click on there. Then it says enter Wi-Fi password. Well that's already been done because I've already used the app before so we'll confirm that. It's saying there that this app only supports 2.4 gigahertz routers so if your router does not have 2.4 gigahertz then it's pointless buying this camera. But mine is dual, it's got 5 and 2.4 so there's no issues with my router at all and it's a BT Home Hub, one of the more modern ones, I think it's a Home Hub 6. So we'll just continue. When you tap continue the mobile phone displays a QR code, hold the camera 15 to 20 centimeters in front of the mobile phone for the camera to scan the QR code. So I'm going to hit continue and there is a QR code. That's beeped so I'm assuming that it's actually scanned the QR code. Heard the beep so we'll click on there and now you can see 
that that light has turned blue and the camera is connected so if you look on the app next to where it says video camera you can edit that to change the name so I'll just put Apeman camera I think so I've changed the name hit completed retrieving video so I think I'll actually point this out the window there we go we've got the video on now we'll enlarge that so we can see what's going on and there we are that's the camera connected so that was very simple really so hopefully you can see that the app is virtually identical on the Android device and the Apple device this is an Android tablet that is an iPhone the only difference being that obviously there's a lot more room on the tablet so it's more spaced out you can see we've got the Apeman IB81 at the top there if we click on that it will take us into the control page for the camera you can see there that the video from the camera has appeared on the top we can see that the signal strength from the camera is 86% that we don't have the sound on we can turn the sound on that's feedback from the two speakers and you'll see the SD there the SD is telling you that it's in standard definition you don't select that to get standard definition whatever that icon is showing is a definition it's actually in at the time so at the moment the camera is displaying in standard definition if you look at the bottom right hand corner there you can see there's a little expansion button if you click on that then you will get the display into full screen mode so that is what the camera is looking at at the moment if we go back and click on the SD it goes from standard definition to high definition and then if we expand it again and the high definition is way better than standard definition if we click on the edit button on the top right hand side there then it brings up a menu we can change the device name share the device and that's actually so you can let family members uh, look at the camera and then we've got basic function settings so you can turn the indicator light on or off you can flip the screen 180 degrees put a time watermark on and I've done that that's basically the on-screen display and then the infrared night vision function you can have it on automatic on or off next we've got motion detection and this is very handy it will allow you to change the sensitivity now I've tried the different sensitivities a low sensitivity is a bit iffy when it comes to detecting people approaching the camera so I would suggest you keep it on high or medium and what that will do is if it detects movement it will start filming if it's not already filming continuously and you've also got the facility for it to send you a notification if we come out of there go back into the memory card settings you can see uh, the total capacity and how much capacity you've got left and you'll see that my card is full and it will just keep looping so it will start recording over the oldest video and just keep recording in a loop around the SD card you can stop it from recording on the SD card should you so wish and you can have it set to event recording or non-stop recording and mine is on non-stop recording so I've switched over onto my iPhone because I want to show you what happens if you're out and about and the camera detects movement so I'm going to turn the camera around now so when it detects movement it sends a notification to your phone so long as you've got a signal and that is a fabulous feature that means if you're out and about and somebody's walking around your property or inside your property depending on where you've got the camera pointing it will let you know and you can investigate immediately it also records these alarms on the message center on the app so it's just said there that we've got new device firmware something to do with the cloud storage service so it's actually updating the firmware from the app which looks like it's going to be very simple I've just had the camera switch off so at the moment you can see there that we're in SD and on the bottom menu here is where you can start looking at some of the videos so you can see that we can select screenshot if I press that now it takes a screenshot in real time and it saves that to the phone gallery now if I press record it starts recording in real time and you can see that the timer is moving there and if I stop it it says that the video has been saved to the phone gallery it has saved it so we'll come back out of there we'll look at playback now playback brings a timeline up when you look at it you can select a calendar to select which day you want to look at and it tells you which days are available so I've got 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th I'll just leave it where it is but whichever day you select you get a timeline at the bottom there where it's greyed out so you can move that to select a different time and then once you've got that where you want it so let's just say that you've been out and about you've had a notification to say that there's been 
motion detected you can scroll there until you find the time there is a time indicated on there and then if you press record it starts recording from the SD card onto your phone so that's 0105 in the morning and we'll stop that it says it's been saved to the phone gallery so we'll come out of there it has wet hook so there we go so you've basically got the facility there if you have an event that needs recording you can record it by accessing the SD card via the Wi-Fi and downloading it onto your phone so you can also take a screenshot so let's just say that you've found the time where there's been an intruder you can see the intruder's face clearly you can take a screenshot just by pressing that button and that is actually a screenshot from 0105 in the morning so this clip is recorded on a night time it's in high definition the only light in there is the infrared lighting from the IR LEDs on the front of the camera and as I say this is high definition and this next clip now we're in standard definition this is a few minutes earlier and you should be looking at me as I'm walking along to see whether you can distinguish the difference in the facial features and the difference between high and standard definition I'm recording this video via the app on my Android device first of all I'm going to give you a comparison between the HD and the SD setting of the camera and it's important to check facial features when you're looking at that to make sure that when it's set at HD or SD that you would be able to recognise somebody walking around your property Obviously that's one of the reasons why you've got a security camera and also to check the sound quality. Now it's a windy day today and that's going to affect the microphone because that's... So this recording is now in standard definition. It will give you an idea of the difference between the two and really you should always be recording in HD because you'll get a much better quality picture. I've got three more clips for you to look at now. This one is in SD and as I'm walking along I'll stop in front of the camera so that you can see what my face looks like now this is recorded in real time off the app so this is as the app is actually seeing what's coming from the camera and then shortly now we're going to transfer which is right now onto the HD clip and as you can see we've got a very poor signal here now the camera is right near the router and the tablet that I'm recording on is right near the router so I don't know why this is really bad but in a second we're going to swap over to the same track but actually downloaded off the camera so this is now being downloaded off the camera and this is the video that you have just seen that was really poor in HD and as you can see it's considerably better downloaded off the camera so obviously what's stored on the SD card is accessible via the app so if you've got a bad connection you can always go down this route to get some decent video I've had this camera for a couple of weeks now and had a really good play with it. As a smart camera it is really very good. It's portable because it's Wi-Fi and it's waterproof so that gives you the best of both worlds. If you make a small base for it and that is really simple, there's nothing difficult about it. You can have it inside the house or outside the house, you can mount it on a wall, put it on a tabletop and it kind of beats the other security cameras that are only in internal ones because you can basically do what you want with it. Now the fact that the app will send you a notification if it detects movement is brilliant. You can be out and about and you can get a message on your phone to tell you that it's detected movement. So long as you've got internet access you can see what's actually going on in real time. Now other security cameras will send you an email to say that they've detected movement. The ones that actually use NVRs, that type of thing. But to actually get a notification on your phone instantly is really very good. Now one of the issues that I've got with this camera is the fact that the SD card is encrypted so if you can't download reasonable video you cannot go to the SD card, take it out of the camera and get decent video off that and I think that is a mistake. I've had quite a few issues with the app with the video not recording onto the phone or the tablet's memory and finding it difficult to actually record video that's already been stored on the memory card but in all honesty that appears to be getting better and in the time that I've had this phone there's been one update for the app and there's been a firmware update for the camera so it seems obvious to me that Apeman are constantly trying to improve the product. So do I recommend this camera? I think if you're looking for a security camera 
and you just really want something to let you know if someone's walking around your property you cannot go wrong with this you can use it inside or out it is really very good as a security camera it's adequate and it will do what you want it to do but the difficulties that you get downloading video off the app or sometimes looking at the real-time video on the app if you haven't got a very good signal can make it quite awkward to see exactly what's going on and you can always switch over to SD in fact Aitman have configured it so that whenever you turn the app off and put it back on again the camera starts up on the app in SD which is a bit of a pain really but they say that that's so it doesn't take too long to see the video so there are obviously a few issues with it I personally think it's a smashing little camera I'm really pleased I've got it and believe it or not I think I'll be using mine indoors rather than outdoors but because I've made it portable I can mount it anywhere I want so yes I think it's a smashing camera I hope you found this review useful and thank you for watching.